They're preparing now by making tree inventories so they know how many trees they have, start addressing tree health, um, whether or not they have trees that may not already that may be on the decline and those that may still be healthy and just being prepared um, not only for the financial part of it but to understand where those ash trees are and if and how they're going to replace them. Uh, ash, ash does not stand very well after it's died. Typically within two years after an ash tree has died they are starting to drop scaffold branches. All citizens need to educate themselves uh, through the Emerald Ash Borer websites that are available on the internet what the insect looks like. Uh, and what the signs and symptoms of them uh, are so they can help us experts by not overwhelming us with uh, June beetles and all kinds of other green insects because there's, there's a lot of metallic green insects that aren't emerald ash borer. You start looking at cutting down trees at, at $500 to $1,000 a piece, somewhere around in there. You can't cut down hundreds of trees without a lot of money and so the money is not there to do a lot of that and so there is a possibility that if you treat your ash tree that has emerald ash borer in it, regardless of what you have done, you could, have, you could be forced to cut down your ash tree. But the likelihood of that is relatively small. I would even say very small. Okay? There are several things that professionals can use. Uh, people that are licensed to control, to apply pesticides, can be, can be using commercial people, arborists, landscapers, as well as city municipality people, etc. cetera. Uh, and, uh, and at the top of that list is imidacloprid or imidacloprid. It's been around for many, many years, probably since the early 1990s. It's commonly used for controlling grubs as merit insecticide. And, uh, and it's, it is a systemically acting insecticide. In fact, all of the insecticides we recommend for control are uh, for control of larvae are systemic. That is, they go inside the tree and move up into the tree. They are all upward moving. One of the drawbacks that we look at as an injectables is that you are injuring the tree and, and applying it to the soil, either with a soil needle below soil line, which you can do if you've got mulch over the, over the, the soil, and just go through the mulch and inject it below the mulch area. Or, or as a pour on, around the, on the soil around a tree is not physically injuring the tree in the process. Uh, we are looking at all of these materials having relatively low impact on, on the injection site, but it is going to take uh, typically uh, three years or so, two to three years, for new wood to be laid over the top to where the injection part is not an area where transport is reduced in that particular area. So a lot of it has to do with how big the holes are, how far apart they are, how many you put in. Lomectin benzoate seems to kill about 98.5% of the borers in the tree. Amatocloprid, Safari, uh, the Merit Safari, these sorts of things. Whether you're injecting or whether you're doing a soil drench situation, appears to kill about 80 to 85 percent of the bores, considerably less. However, as I mentioned earlier, you only need to kill 70 percent to have a healthy tree. Okay, so either all of these methods work. All right.